Welcome back to Blender Frenzy. I am Justin, as always, and the last time we talked about rigid body world collections. And so we're going to continue on talking about these settings here, a little bit about accuracy, and then down here in our cache settings and baking our cache. Um, so here's what we have so far in our simulation. So, boom, just like that. Okay, now constraints here um, acts like the... Um, uh, collections here. You can choose which collection or which uh, rigid body world you want to use for the constraints. Um, I don't have any constraints, nor will I have any constraints in the entirety of this uh, simulation, so I'm going to skip this, but I'm guessing this acts a lot like these collections here. Uh, constraints are things like um, anchor points, like if you think about hinges, like if you have a door that's swinging, that's a constraint. Um, there are many different types of constraints. You can play with that at your leisure, but I'm going to move on to speed here. Speed acts just like you would think it would. So if you do a speed of two, then it doubles the speed of your simulation. Um, if you half it, 0.5, it slows it down, boom, to half the speed of the simulation. Now it does produce a different simulation, as you notice between speed one, see how they land like that and then if I do 0.5 um, they land uh, slightly differently so adjusting the speed does change your simulation if that's something that you don't want to happen you need to keep that in mind okay so let's go back to one here now these three options are just to increase the accuracy of the physics simulation so split impulse if you hover over that it says it reduces the extra velocity that can build up when objects collide. So um, if they collide with a whole bunch of different objects and maybe they pick up speed and they just go crazy. So um, this also lowers the simulation stability. Uh, so only use when necessary is that. So I'm actually not going to use that. Um, so the steps per second and the solver iterations, I they also have to do with accuracy. The higher these numbers are, the more accurate your simulation is. Um, but I don't actually know specifically, I don't know what steps per second means, or I don't know what solver iterations means. Just play around with those. Um, I'm, I'm not having any sort of uh, accuracy problems with this right now. Um, but uh, later on, maybe when we get a whole bunch of them falling, I might need to bump this up to 100 or 200. Say, for instance, you have something where a whole bunch of physics objects are falling through your floor. You're probably going to want to up these two, and you'll have to play with those. Uh, like I said, I think 100 or 200 here is a good balance of accuracy, um, depending on what you're doing. So it all it always depends on your system and what you're doing and a whole bunch of other things. So you need to test it out yourself. Okay. So next is the cache. And so we went over this briefly at, in one of my other videos, but got the start frame and the end frame, one to 250. You can see I have uh, frame one to 63 cached in, and that's this uh, bright orange. You can see this more faded, darker orange down here all the way to 250. If I scroll out, you can see there's nothing after that. So if I just play my simulation it'll play and it will cache all of that in until it reaches 250 and then it will stop caching that in now of course if i bump this up to 300 and let's come over here and play it'll continue to cache all the way to 300 and you can see bump that up to 400 and then you can see down here <laughs> Wow, I don't know why it did that, but uh, the darker orange would usually just bump that up. So let's do 350. Uh, uh, yeah, you can see that darker orange down there. Okay, I'm just going to put this back down to 250 for now. Now it still says 300 frames in memory. And if I play that again, uh, it doesn't change. So it's still 300 frames in memory. So in order to clear this cache, let's say you want to clear that completely, um, you have to make some sort of change in your environment. And like I've said in another video, you can actually take one of these, let's enable our overlays, and grab it to move it, and then right-click to cancel. So you're not actually moving anything or changing anything, but Blender does recognize uh, something has changed. So once you start playing again, 
all that cache is cleared and it starts over. And you can see this if I go to frame one and move this right click to come back. If I don't move anything uh, right now, you can't tell a difference. But if I click on something else, you can see now this cache turns yellow. That means that the cache is outdated. And sometimes you'll see it says outdated cache here. I don't know when that is, but um, you can see that it's yellow down here, which means that the next time we hit play, it's going to start over just like that. Boom. Okay, now if you're having some problems and you want to clear this all the way to zero and you want to keep it that way for, for a minute, then um, just change this to one before you do that and then move this and then right click and then come back to frame one and then play. And after you play and then pause, it'll refresh here and then say zero frames in memory. So there you go. And then that, that way you can make sure that all the cache is cleared out from the memory uh, if you're having any problems and then maybe you want to then try it again, bump this back up to 250 and then go from there. Okay, so let's get on to baking. So if I click bake here, all 1 to 250 frames will be baked into the cache or protected. If I click bake, you can see, boom, now we have this dark solid orange bar down here and it is protected which means if we do our little trick that we did before uh, and grab this and then right click to change something, you can see it doesn't matter what I click on, it's still a dark orange bar. And if I play that, it plays exactly the same way that it's going to play. And it's 200 frames in memory right here locked in. And so this is good for before you render something or if you have something um, that you've simulated and you don't want it to change. This is really good for protecting any pieces of that simulation. Um, so you can also obviously delete the bake. You delete the bake and then it still is cached in. So you still have the same, same animation. It'll keep going in the same animation unless, again, you make a change up here. So we have to make a change and then it restarts that cache. Now, I can actually move my playhead to, let's say, 150. I know that this is the frame that I want to cache everything in uh, until. So I come over here, calculate to frame, boom. And then it caches that in all the way to that frame. And then if I only want this baked in, I can hit the next button, current cache to bake, boom. And now it's only from here to here. The first 150 frames is cached in. Now, if I keep pressing play, it will keep baking that in just as if it was caching it in because I have current cache to bake. Um, so let's go ahead and go to the beginning. And again, all of that is cached in. Of course, if I'm out here and I press play, nothing is going to happen. But if I start at 201 and press play, oh, looks like nothing happens there. I think I have to be behind here in order for that to start caching in. Yep and then it starts to bake all of those 250 frames. And you also have bake all dynamics, which is bake all the physics. Now, I don't know what that means. I don't know if right now, currently, it's only baking this one. Um, I don't think so. I think it's baking everything, but I could be wrong. Um, so if you wanna bake everything, for sure way, bake all physics, I haven't tested it out. Um, well, I actually have, but I can, um, Let's see, let's see if I just hide this thing here. And we want this. Yeah, see, nothing down here is indicating any sort of change. Um, so I'm gonna unhide that. So maybe this is kind of uh, for maybe all of the, all of these. So everything here, you, if you have different physics in different collections, maybe that's what this means, delete all dynamics. I delete all bakes from there. Um, so I'm just gonna delete all bakes and same thing. Oh, so, if you click delete all bakes, so just notice this. Uh, now nothing is cached in. So once I press play, it's going to redo that cache. But if I do that again, uh, cache to bake, and then uh, just delete bake, that is still cached in. You can see that with the orange. But if I delete all bakes, um, well, let's bake it at first. <laughs> so current cache to bake and then delete all bakes. Okay, well, there you go. It's still cached in. So I don't know, I don't know how that works. <laughs> but uh, 
uh, if you if you bake everything, bake all dynamics, and then delete all bakes. All right, so maybe I accidentally just changed something for some reason, and then it just turned yellow again. So in here you can see um, what I did. This is good that we did that. Is you can see cache is outdated. Let's redo that, and there we go. So again, the way, and then that disappears over here, you see, so again, you can see this is cached in. If I delete the bakes and then just play right from where I am. Oh, that's done. Oh, cause I didn't bake it. So let's bake it, bake, delete all bakes. And then if I start playing from here, nope. How did I do that? I might have to go back and watch this after I, I'm done recording to figure out what exactly it is that I did, but if you if you caught it, then there you go. But now you can see that sometimes your cache is out of date and it will tell you over here and you will see that yellow bar. So it also looks like this update all to frame here, it just acts just like this, calculate to frame. So if I jump to frame 200, and then I say update alt to frame, it'll cache that in. Of course, this is going really quickly because we don't have very many physics objects colliding with each other, but this is gonna bog you down if you have a, a whole bunch of them, which we'll probably see a little bit later when we have a thousand rolls. And that is also a, a good thing with caching this in, by the way, caching or baking. Uh, when you have a whole bunch of them that you start caching in, it's probably gonna go really slow. And then after you have it cached in like this, or let's go to 250, after all of your frames are cached in, you can go back to the beginning and play it again without changing anything, and then it should play in real time. So, so we have finally gone over enough of the settings to where we are ready now to create a whole pile of a thousand. So stay tuned as always, and you'll see me over there.